So, I hope everyone enjoyed their lunch. Uh, like Stuart said, I'm Cody, and I'm going to be talking about the patterns in daily torpor and activity that I've observed in the red-tailed fasci gale over the last year. <coughs> Just to give everyone a bit of a recap on what I covered in my introductory seminar, um, torpor can be defined as a significant reduction in metabolic rate, ventilation, body temperature, and heart rate, and it's particularly important for small endotherms that have higher surface area to volume ratios and consequently higher mass-specific metabolic rates compared to larger endotherms. They also have higher basal metabolic rates while in thermoneutrality, which you can see here with the 7 gram pygmy mass, um, but has a significantly higher mass-specific basal metabolic rate compared to the desert cottontail down at 670 grams. This combined with lower fat storage and insulation abilities means that energetic demands is significantly increased. So the use of daily torpor, therefore, um, can reduce daily energy expenditure with some small endotherms able to reduce their metabolic rate to around 30% of BMR. Along with low ambient temperature, one of the primary factors thought to induce torpor is restricted access to food and water. So therefore, small endotherms that live in unpredictable environments are more likely to benefit from using this. Uh, one zone in particular is the arid zone notorious for uh, high daily and seasonal fluctuations in ambient temperature and low food and water availability. Um, but despite these uh, environmental conditions, the diversity of certain groups, such as the small carnivorous uh, mammals like Dazirids, um, has a very high diversity. And this is mostly believed to be due to the extensive use of torpor in these species. Uh, generally, torpor using uh, Dazirids are nocturnal entering torpor in the early hours of the morning, staying, torpor for, staying torpid for hours during the day, and arousing in the late afternoon for activity at night. Uh, an example of this is the red-tailed fascigate. Uh, it's a species that has sexual dimorphism, meaning the males are significantly larger than the females, and human activity has also led them to be incredibly geographically restricted. They're listed as endangered by the EPBC and near threatened by the IUCN. Another interesting feature is that their biology is relatively undescribed, but they have previously been observed entering daily torpor between 13 and 25 degrees Celsius. So my study uh, aimed to expand, uh, expand the understanding of this species' biology by quantifying torpor use and daily activity. We were sent uh, 10 lab-bred red-tailed fasci gales from the University of Western Sydney, and all of the data for my study, particularly oxygen consumption, was collected prior to the animal's breeding season, which is uh, July to August. Initially, I expected torpor patterns to be consistent with other arid zone desiurids, and considering the sexual dimorphism, I expected there to be a sexual difference in activity. Before we started our experiments, we implanted one and a half gram transmitters into the intraperitoneal cavity. These transmitters are temperature dependent, which means that uh, the pulse intervals, when they're exposed to a low um, ambient temperature, will be longer. And this was calibrated using a water bath at an ambient temperature range of 15 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, body temperature data was collected both during oxygen consumption experiments and during rest days while they're in their enclosures. After the um, surgery, which took around 15 minutes, we had short-term recovery for the fast gales in front of heaters then they were placed in small enclosures uh, in a temperature controlled room and no experiments were conducted for around 10, de 10 days uh, to allow for recovery. We measured oxygen consumption um, and body temperature during torpor using open flow respirometry. Uh, to do this we placed the pascales in one litre respirometry chambers and into a temperature controlled environment which is this fridge for around 24 hours. Uh, during this time Food and water were withheld, and they were exposed to a natural photo period for this region. Just to give you all an idea on what, for me at least, a um, respirometry trace looked like, this is a sample of one of my girls at a constant 16 degrees Celsius. You can see that we placed her into the chambers in the late afternoon uh, with uh, the dark phase where there was no lights on in the chamber expressed by this black bear. She had fluctuations in metabolic rate and body temperature throughout the night and entered torpor during the hours leading up to dawn. You can see that by the reduction in body temperature and metabolic rate. And she stayed torpid for about two and a half hours. 
before this increase in uh, metabolic rate and body temperature, uh, you can see signals for arousal and fluctuations again until we took her out uh, before the next trial. If we express the data that I collected from this as a function of ambient temperature versus body temperature, there's a couple of things going on here and I'll explain it. This black line here is what body temperature would look like if it was equal to ambient temperature. These open circles are 10 minute averages of body temperature during torpor for the faster girls. These black squares are 30 minute averages while the animal is in their thermoneutral zone and at rest. And these closed black circles are after peak arousal for each temperature and a, a 10 minute average again. Um, what you can see is that while they're thermoregulating and while they're aroused, their body temperature doesn't fluctuate that much. Um, but when they enter torpor, you have at a higher ambient temperature, um, closer to the animal's thermoneutral zone, a certain amount of thermoconfirmation occurring. But as the ambient temperature decreases, the gradient between this and the TBTA line is increasing. Um, and there, if you compare the body temperature at rest, at rest the, when at rest at a high metabolic rate compared to torpor, um, there's about an 8 degree difference at 24 degrees Celsius and 16 degrees Celsius. And they're able to drop this body temperature through significant reductions in metabolic rate. Again, these open circles are 10 minute averages of um, oxygen consumption during torpor. <coughs> 30 minute averages of the animal at rest in its thermoneutral zone and 10 minute averages after peak arousal while also at rest. And if you remember from the previous slide with body temperature, the um, while at a thermoregulating at a high body temperature, the it was essentially a straight line, but when you look at their resting metabolic rates, it's actually increasing with decreasing ambient temperature. And this, this is because the animal is compensating um, while it's trying to thermoregulate and it needs to increase its metabolic rate to do so. But during torpor, um, it can decrease its metabolic rate and you can see when comparing it to resting, there's about a 56% reduction in, at 24 degrees Celsius and about a 30% reduction at 16 degrees Celsius. But we also measured daily activity. Um, we did this we summed movement over time using passive infrared sensors um, and we measured daily running duration, total distance traveled, maximum speed and average speed using bike myelometers. The um, passive infrared sensors were placed to the top of the fascicles enclosure and was, collect and was connected to a data logger, whereas the bike myelometers, uh, we had all the fascicles enclosures had rat running wheels inside them there was a magnet attached to the running wheel and the movement of the magnet was picked up by a sensor that was also placed inside the enclosure and this would send information to this um, receiver here and obviously any um, any data on distance was adjusted um, based on the size of the running wheel based on and, and the size of the bike wheel that it thought it was measuring. Um, these two graphs here are an average of activity over a three day period, but expressed as a 24 hour, um, between males and female fasci girls. Again, the dark phase where there was no lights in the room is this black bar here. And you can see, even though there is scattered activity during the day, it's primarily nocturnal. And there is peak activity in both males and females during, the, during dusk and in the hours leading up to dawn. And between them, there is really no difference between male and female um, movement over time. Um, while I have you here, though, I should mention that between 5 and 6 p.m., I excluded one hour because this is the time that I feed the animals, and opening and closing the lids would have interfered with the data. Here we have uh, daily run duration and total running distance. And you can see that on average, uh, fast PLs every day would run for almost two hours on the running wheels and covered about 3.2 kilometers during that time. And although it looks like there might be a sexual difference between uh, males running for about two hours and covering about 2.9 kilometers, and females only running for about an hour and a half and covering about 3.3 kilometers, 
Application of a t-test between two sexual groups found no significance with either. But this is likely due to my small sample size. And a similar thing is found when you, find, when you look at the maximum running speeds, which is around 12 kilometers an hour for FASCA gals, and average running speed, which is about 1.6 kilometers an hour. And you see a similar thing, even though males ran about 16 kilometers an hour, and on average around 1.3, whereas females ran about 9 kilometers an hour with an average of 1.8, Application of a t-test between sexual groups found no significance. Uh, one thing we can see is that through the significant reduction in metabolic rate and body temperature during torpor, uh, the animals have a p potential for significant energy savings uh, through the application of torpor. And for an animal that lives in the arid zone, this is crucial for their survival. Um, I should mention that torpor patterns that I've observed is quite similar to what you can see in literature for other small desiurids. And also when we compare maximum running speeds, it's similar to desiurids of a similar size and weight. Um, considering their sexual dimorphism though, it's somewhat surprising there's no significant effect of sex on their activity. But again, like I said, it's probably due to, the, to my small sample size. But I think that studies like this are incredibly important because you're expanding the knowledge of a relatively undescribed species. And you're also broadening the understandings of energy saving mechanisms and activity patterns um, of arid zone desiurids. And considering that in the last two centuries the major extinctions on this planet has occurred within Australia, understanding physiology I think is crucial for any kind of conservation or management strategy for native mammals. Before I finish, I'd like to thank quite a few people. First of all, my supervisor Fritz for throwing his support and resources behind me. Um, Gerhard for not throwing me out of his office when I came to him with numerous technical difficulties. Uh, Chris, Daniela, Shannon and Anna for the incredible support they've shown me throughout the course of this year. And also the ABRI for giving me my honor scholarship and essentially allowing me to pay rent. <laughs> Do you have any questions? If not, thank you for listening to my talk. Questions? Uh, nice talk. I was just thinking, when you're doing your metabolic rate, you you, actually, you, you left them, you gave them food 24 hours and left them, and then you took the measurements after 24 hours after feeding them? Is that right? um, whilst they were in the respiratory chambers, they weren't yep. given food and water. Yep. But in, obviously, they yeah. and they had access yeah. and do you, they had I was just thinking, if they, do you think if you gave them, say, 12 hours instead of 24 hours between um, pre-feeding, do you think that would influence the metabolic rate at all? Like, essentially, do you think nutritional, the, the nutritional aspects of the, the animals influence their metabolic rate? Going to particularly into... It definitely could, and um, I was, I have... Uh, limited data, not in the respiratory chambers, but in the influence on food access to torpor use. But I'm still working through that. I was just thinking broadly, do you think it influences their ability to go into torpor if they're... Definitely. If, if, if um, access to food and resources is one of the primary sort of cues for torpor use, then whether they have more or less, I would imagine, would influence how often they express it. Although if there is something to say that um, spontaneous torpor is... Like a, there have been species that observed torpor use throughout the day. Anyway. Okay. Anything else? I've got one. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> with that trace you showed of an animal going into torpor, yes. um, I know that coming out of torpor requires metabolic activity. Yeah. Is entering torpor uh, an active phase two, or is that just something where you just tumble into it? Getting into mechanisms is requires a lot of explanation and I would not want to not do it justice by what I'm saying now. So if you want to talk about it later, I'm yeah, no, no, like sure, sure. Because I, I had a follow-up question and it was that that animal only was only in torpor for two and a half hours. Yes. And I wonder whether the saving there uh, outweighed the cost, what, of, getting, what it took cost of getting in and the cost of getting out. Yes. Yeah. And, I mean, you're talking to, about to, be, no, to be fair, um, like this was I'm not, I wasn't necessarily presenting a two and a half hour gap as what you could expect. That's just a nice way of showing it to everybody. Anybody else got a question? You just have to, the, the laws of peak, 
against the crop. If you start cracking the tumor, then you have to put the answer. Yeah, no, well, is going into torpor an active process, or do you just tumble into it? Uh, it, it just depends on which species. Okay. Thanks. 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 Thanks.